right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego, a bit cloudy today actually, uh, which is fine because last weekend we had the horrendous heat wave down here where it was like we're just we're so ridiculously hot people were losing their minds so a little bit of cloud cover doesn't go amiss and today i'm joined by simon haig who normally resides back in my old hometown of dublin ireland but today is in west sussex in england how are you doing simon i'm great and it's great to, to join you and it's not quite as hot here as it is over there <laughs> yeah i'm sure <laughs> And uh, Simon is growth strategist, leadership mindset, brand advisor, coach, author, keynote speaker, and top 100 global negotiation. Uh, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about mindful negotiation. So Simon, when most people think about negotiation, mindfulness isn't exactly what comes to, comes to mind for most people. No, I agree. And but I, I do think that particularly given we're going through a circuit breaker of a year this year, mm -hmm. whereby I think there are heightened sensitivities. And I think there's more of an acknowledged need for more return on relationship, for more providing value, for doing things a little bit more sensitively and listening uh, and, you know, operating in a more co coalescent type way. So um, you can still operate through the, the traditional pr prism of negotiation, preparing, planning, proposing, putting it all to bed, performing the negotiation. But I think being very mindful of your own influencing skills uh, is cr really critical, which I can talk about in a little second. So I think it's a nuanced, subtle version for the new age. Yeah, no, no, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think you're absolutely 100% correct. I think is uh, people are open today to things that perhaps they wouldn't have been as open to three, six, nine months ago. And, and I think it's put in more of an emphasis on, let me say the humanness or humanity of, of business dealings. Correct. Cor correct. And I think, uh, you know, I think at, at, at the end of the day, you know, providing value in a win-win ethical way is much mm -hmm. more likely to get you retain your existing clients, but also build a brand and reputation that you need. And I talk about every business, every, every one of us really is governed by what I call the triple R, risk, revenue, and reputation. That's all it is. It's about revenue, risk, and reputation. Mm -hmm. And I think being very mindful of that as your end goal, but using those soft influencing skills that I mentioned, reasoning, friendliness, coalition, bargaining, rather than the old school thumping the table and using sanctions, I think that's more likely to get results. Not all the time, you still have to be mm -hmm. a little bit hard nosed sometimes, but I think being a little bit more mindful about how you achieve those results, I think is critically important. And a lot of that comes, uh, Simon, would you agree? A lot of that comes from having confidence in yourself and your ability or having worked with somebody like you and having the skill set to do it. Because I do think it's a neglected skill set. It's something we don't talk about a lot. There's a lot of salespeople who are great at all the other parts, but never have any guidelines or training around negotiation and kind of wing it at the end. Correct, correct. I mean, I'm just amazed. I've, I've been asked to do negotiation programs with a, an American business, two American business schools in Dublin and, and business schools in various places around Europe and the Middle East. And uh, there are so few guidelines. Most of this is common sense, right? And I think mm -hmm. you kind of nailed it on the head. Self and situational awareness are the key things. Self-awareness is realizing where you stand in society. And then critically important, situational awareness. When you walk into a room, are you confident enough? To, are you picking up the right vibes? Are you, are you picking up who's noticing, who's not noticing, who's disparaging you? And as you said, most of that comes with experience. It comes with making mistakes. I've made mistakes. I'm, I've written you know, three books on contracts and deal making, but I make mistakes in business. But it's about learning as you go through and that self and situational awareness, that's critically important. Yeah, and I, and I and just to underline that, I think self-awareness is so, so important. And I think that if ever there was a time for people to work on self-awareness, I mean, this is the right time to do it. Maybe they've got a little more space to do that right now. But I do yeah. think... I do think things are going to be a little more nuanced going forward and people have a heightened sense of uh, a heightened level of sensitivity. So everything you can do to bring uh, maybe a more elegant approach to, to the proceedings, I think is going to help you. Correct. And I think, you know, when you go 
into a negotiation, I think there are three, I call it the three-legged stool. You need to analyze yourself in the situation. You need to analyze as much as you can who the other side is. Where are they at? Where is their mind at? Do they really have the authority? Are they bluffing? Are they scared? Do they actually need your support? Uh, which mm -hmm. sounds a bit odd. But sometimes you actually need to support the other side to, to, to make their own case. And then the third, the third leg, that, so that's self and other side assessment. And then the situational assessment. What is the situation? And I think, I think you know, none of us are taught sufficiently about listening skills and questioning skills. Mm -hmm. I think Tony, Tony Robbins talks about the, you know, the better questions, using better questions get, get better answers. Nobody teaches this, this stuff at school or in business schools, but I think having that nuanced approach to listening, asking questions, asking how you can serve the other person. And I know it's an overused word, but authentic, authenticity is critically important. People can fish out, people can smell a rat very quickly. They can smell when somebody's trying to pull the wool over their eyes. So just be you, just be you. Yeah, no, I I I hundred percent agree, especially with the authenticity piece, and you can't fake it because people can see it. And as I said, people have a height; their antennas are up now more than ever. Oh, yeah. I think you know, given the the situation that we've all gone through um, yeah. on this, and I do think if you bring a level of honesty and authenticity, because at the end of the day, that's what we want from somebody who sells to us is we want that yeah. you know, we want them to know more about the subject generally than we do. We want them to know more about their product or service. We want them to know more about how it can be applied. We want to know what they've done with other people. And so if you approach it from the, as you say, if you approach it from that helpful point of view, uh, yeah. that's, that's what resonates. Yeah. Now that does to mean you should be soft right and sure but alternatively the old the old way of thinking that you must be hard all the time you must you know must drive a hard bargain the best deal makers the best negotiators i talk about this in my in my latest book how to be a better door closer uh, are pragmatic they have that mm -hmm. self and situational awareness to know how to switch between soft and hard negotiation and i think it's all about that that self and situational awareness yeah, because I mean, I, I, I think that's a great thing to point out, because as you say, it doesn't mean that you give away the farm when you're negotiating no. far from it. In fact, um, uh, the CEO of our company, my business partner, he always likes to say that a good outcome of a negotiation is where both people hurt a little. Both people just, you know, yeah. there's a little bit of pain on each side. I mean, you could phrase it differently, but I, but I think that's a good one is like each side had to give a little bit and they're like, OK, but it worked out. It's fair. And I think that's the Correct. thing is you you have to get both sides on the same page as wanting a fair outcome. Yeah, yeah. I, I also think the whole area of gender balance, right? I mean, and I'm not talking about male and female, right? We mm -hmm. all have masculine and feminine traits, okay? And there have been all sorts of study, studies in the military space that demonstrate that the feminine, when it's brought to bear on closing deals, they tend to be more more sustainable deals. So I think I'm talking about the more gender balance we have in organization, gender balance. I'm not talking about diversity or minority yeah. advancement. I'm talking about gender balance. The more likely you are to have heightened levels of self and situational awareness and be better at, at mindful negotiation. That's a critical point to make. Yeah, I mean, I, and I agree. I mean, I think it stands to reason, though, too, isn't it? If you have a great sales experience and everything's going swimmingly and you're getting on really well, and then you have a horrible negotiation experience. Yeah, you maybe you get the deal done and you have a customer, but you leave a bad taste. And that, re that relationship then needs to be, um, if, you, if you like, it needs to be rescued over time. Or maybe it, it isn't. Maybe it'll always be, that, uh, it'll always be that, rem that memory of that terrible negotiation. So there's a real benefit in making sure the negotiation is as enjoyable, if possible, as it can be. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And just one other issue just to mention is the whole area of cultural differences. I mean, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's, a, there's a chart that I use in my training programs, an X and Y axis, and there are about 180, 100, 200 different you know, national cultures in the world. And so everything we've just spoken about, you could overlay that 200 times. Every culture has brings different nuances. So, for example, you know, I work with an Israeli guy in Dublin uh, and the Israeli culture is quite demonstrative and quite loud in your face. The absolute opposite of that culture would be the Japanese, very inscrutable mm -hmm. and uh, very hard to understand from an Israeli or a Western perspective what's being thought. So just bear in mind, cultural differences overlay this com com very, com you know, in a very complex way, many folds.
Yeah, no, I know it's, it's a fantastic point. And even um, it's, it's, it's true in, in Ireland, in the UK, it's very true in America. There's regional differences. You would negotiate with somebody from New York in a very different way than you would negotiate for somebody, say, from the South, because they're very different approaches. One is a much more in your face to New York and they expect it to be like that. Yeah. And to be honest, yeah. they're not going to respect you unless you meet them there. Uh, and, and, you know, in some of the Southern places, it's, it's a lot more genteel. It's no less tough, but it's just, it's just wrapped yeah. in a more genteel cloak. <laughs> yeah. And as I said, I've, I've lived in Australia and Australia it was yeah. very, yeah, yes, mate, I'm interested. No, mate, I'm not interested, which yeah. seems kind of, seems kind of in your face. Whereas in Dublin and Ireland, I actually talk about this phenomenon, the Irish no, right? Irish, the Irish culture generally doesn't like to say no for also, as you know, historical nuance reasons. And so Ireland is a great place to live, to network and to build up your negotiation skills. But it's actually a very hard place to close deals. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful that there is whole minefields of, of cultural differences <laughs> and nuances. But again, it's the more aware you are and the more... The more you've practiced and traveled and appreciated and made mistakes, the more likely mm -hmm. you're going to rough that hard edges of a bad negotiator off and you'll become a, a soft pebble negotiator, as I call it. Yeah. So what are a couple of tips that you would give to anybody listening in if they're in negotiations right now? How can they, number one, like assess that they're, that they're doing it optimally and two, what are some things they could do to maybe improve things, even, even quickly, small little tweaks? Yeah, I think I think the first thing is to spend as much time. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So spend mm. as much time as you can, right up front, getting to know who you're dealing with, what power do they have? I mean, I haven't mentioned the whole power equation, but there mm. are four types of power that we all have. There's networking power, there's informational power, there's relationship power, and there's hierarchical power. So try and figure out where does that other person sit in that power equation so that's the first thing i would talk about and the second thing just is really really focus on your awareness really focus on it try not to feel if you're a people pleaser right like i generally am right if i ask a question <clears throat> i don't like silence i tend to fill it in with a follow-on question force yourself not to do that actually force yourself to listen because by it's in those moments of silence i've been in multi hundred million dollar deals it's often in those moments to silence do you truly understand the power of the other side or lack of power. And there's, mm -hmm. a, there's, a, there's a saying, you know, loose lips sink ships. It tends to be in those silent moments where the wrong things are said. So I think there'd be two tips. Do your due diligence and use silence and listening carefully and, and strategically. Yeah, no, I think those are great. And, and I totally agree, particularly on, on, on the silence one. Uh, and I think it's become, to be honest, I think it's become an even bigger issue now because a lot of salespeople who have been used to being in the room with people are now on Zoom with people. There's the yeah. really rhyme, great rhyming. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and there the silence petrifies people because they're like, oh my goodness, you know, are they still there? What's yeah. going on? I can't see them. Or even if they're on camera, what's going on? And so I think to your point, I think that's where the discipline really comes in because it's even harder to say, okay, no, just, just you've asked a question, it's silent right now, give them time to think. Let them yep. think before they answer. Don't jump in, don't fill the silence. Correct. And this whole area of the online world, I mean, mm -hmm. there will be books written in 20 years' time about fundamentally the world went to sleep at the end of 2019 and we've woken up in 2030, right? Yeah. Everything's been accelerated by a decade. And that's good in some respects if you own tech companies and supermarkets, mm -hmm. but it's a, real, it's a real challenge for so many industries. But I don't think we can hide behind it. We've accelerated by a decade overnight. And, yeah. uh, and, and I think that's going to influence the way we negotiate, the way we communicate, the way we influence, the way we listen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to influence so many things. And I think the best negotiators are set up. Those people who really understand these soft skills, I think, are set up for the optimal success going forward. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we were actually having a, uh, we did an event about a, a week or so ago with six experts who are about business and education experts about the future of education and the future workforce. And one of the big things that came out of it is these are the skills that are not being taught in schools. They're not being taught in colleges, right? Those, Correct. those, what, what we call soft skills, even though, I mean, I think that unfortunately, I think the name kind of undermines itself at times. Exactly. 
Exactly. No, exactly. I mean, the World Economic Forum every year in Davos, although it won't be next January, they determine the 10, they, they do a blend of global um, corporate skills and the top 10 every year they determine them. And the top 10 this year, about six or seven of them are those, quote, soft skills. Negotiation is actually one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Communication, networking skills, uh, those kind of skills. They're not soft skills. They're fundamental skills mm -hmm. to success in life. Yeah, I mean, basic leadership skills, they're not taught in, not really taught in schools, not taught in colleges anywhere. I mean, people Correct. go from school, they go into a college and then they focus on their major, but they don't have any of these uh, skills wrapped around it that they're going to need. They're going to certainly come out with their degree and all that knowledge, but suddenly realize they can't operate in, in, the, in the business world because they're missing all of these things. Yeah, I, I guess though I, I'd have one kind of set, kind of final observation, and that is yeah. that I, I'm writing I'm writing a, a new book of, uh, right now about uh, the power of growth. Right, the, it's called the, effectively the growth journey, and there's external growth, and we can only ever have what drive one car at a time, sleep in one bed at a time, and and so we but we're all chasing that external growth, okay, and and so and that looks desperate at times, but there's inner growth, right? Inner growth is infinite nobody's found the depth of the human soul and the ability to influence and the ability to connect and communicate and i think those people who will focus more on that inner growth are more likely ironically to be successful yeah i i i agree i think that's a great way to wind up and i think it's it's so true and and as i kind of said at the outset i think this is a fantastic opportunity for people who maybe haven't taken the time out to look inwards and do some some internal work. This is a fantastic time to do it. You're probably never going to get a better chance than this, because when you know you're going to get caught up in 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 the world when things start to start to uh, uh, unlock again. So now is the best time to do it. But I do I, I agree totally. And and just to add one last point on top of that is. Don't wait. Don't wait around. Nobody's going to come and do it for you. No company, no person. Nobody's going to suddenly go, oh, hey, Simon, I'm going to work on your inner development. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. I, I, it sounds brutal, but there is actually nobody out there to save any of us. It's up to mm -hmm. us to save ourselves and, and to develop the skills, these soft negotiation skills that we really need to thrive and that the world economic forum has said seven out of ten skills are these skills so mindful negotiation skills are really powerful excellent well listen thank you very much uh, all of simon haig's information will be below this video but before we go simon please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your business yeah so i uh, 28 years i started life as a commercial lawyer and for the last 10 years I've run my own business, but before that I was a CEO for an American company in Australia. And today I run a business which is coaching, consulting, mentoring, training. I've written three books. I, uh, I really, the tagline is the growth strategist. I help organizations and people with four aspects of growth, business growth, leadership growth, brand growth, and that's personal and business brand, and then personal growth, which is mindset growth. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that kind of sums it up. That's fantastic. Listen, uh, thanks for joining me today, Simon, in uh, coming to us from the UK via Ireland. Uh, <laughs> so say hello to my hometown when you get back. I and, will. Uh, and I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you. It's great. Th great to meet you.